at this national convention, the the questions um, that were not being addressed uh, to be able to give people true information about what was what was it that the referendum council was pursuing. Um, they merely read out a synthesis of the what they considered to have been uh, the conclusions of those regional dialogues. Now, I, I must admit that the, th the synthesis was very good. There, there's no question about that. It was very good. But I thought uh, in a national convention of this kind that there would have been much more uh, dialogue on the five points uh, so that each of those groups from each of the, sorry each of the delegates from all over Australia would themselves send themselves say split into three groups of say you know 40 yeah or maybe even four groups yeah um, to discuss each of those five points and bring them back and they would have had plenty of time like half a day on one topic half a day on another topic then the next day half a day and then they would have had one full day putting up a concluding concluding statement um, spelling out you know the the pros and cons of each of them and and being being mature enough to be able to say we agreement was not reached on a agreement was reached on b c and d and no agreement was reached on e yeah and so we need more time we take that to the government and say we need more time to to discuss this again back in those regional dialogues yeah um, now, that would have been the much more appropriate way of, of doing this because it's, you know, this is something of, of national importance and of a special significance to Aboriginal people. Now, um, this is about our survival as a race of people. Yeah? That's what this is about. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> that didn't happen. Uh, that the, and I expressed my concern to Pat Anderson person that your facilitation is wrong and that your, this is being pursued incorrectly and I think we both we it was good to to be able to say that we both agree yeah, we, we did agree but how do we fix it up because it's very much late in the day and clearly there was division within their organizational network at the convention because they couldn't agree on the fact that there were some things going wrong yeah. and that was very evident because you know they, they were racing in and out all the time meeting with each other and uh, they were very concerned about what was going on yeah. and quite frankly um, if I were to give a proper appraisal of what happened uh, they lost control and the facilitators um, were not professional in what they were doing. Um, quite frankly, they were, you know, um, ordinary lay people who had a long participation in Aboriginal affairs, but were right-wing people. They were not um, carrying the message from the people. They were people with very personal views, yeah, and um, and that was reflected in the way in which they. They control the meeting, yeah. um, discussions in those workshops. Because I sat in some of those workshops and watched them, and they were ignoring delegates as well, um, and wouldn't give them speaking rights. Yeah, and um, one of those young, per one of those persons was Lyle Munro, Jr. Lyle Munro has been involved in a lot of things in, over the years in the Black Movement, 
and he, you know, he, he, he was making reference to the fact that, you know, we need to, first of all, find out how serious the government is. And he's, he, he, you know, he kept saying, um, asking the question, if we're going to be talking about Aboriginal people in the Constitution, well, then we need some, we need something from the government, some goodwill gesture, and we need the government to give Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory their fundamental human rights and to stop having them enslaved by holding them to, you know, this, what do you call it, that, um, that card, um, special, what do they call it, um, basic card. You know, they, they needed to, um, to withdraw that, give the people the rights, give the people the right to go back home. And not only that, give the people ownership of their land again so that rather than having a military person in charge of the lands and having sole right to negotiate their lands away, um, let the people make decisions, give the land titles back to the people, give the, pe give the decision making back to the people. You know, if they can't do that in the Northern Territory as a good, goodwill gesture going forward, well then how could we trust them with taking something forward such as a constitutional referendum, referendum, which will have much more significant, you know, impact, significant impact on Aboriginal people across the country, not just Northern Territory. Now, and this is something that he was saying. But unfortunately, those who were facilitating the meetings were misrepresenting what he was saying, and then they they refused to give him the floor anymore. Yeah, and. Um, like, you can't stifle discussion like that because he was a mandated delegate to speak about issues, you know, for his region. And, um, and you know, and it's, a, it's an absolute disgrace that, um, you know, he, he wasn't able to, um, to do that and he was blocked out from having a say. And so a lot of people um, were of extreme concern, who were delegates, that other people, such as those staffers who were running those regional dialogues, were the ones who were leading the discussion all the time and were given preference over the delegates with speaking rights. Not only that, there were people there who were observers who were also ended up being given speakers' rights and they were getting up asking questions and talking. Yeah? And there were other observers from the Northern Territory, from Queensland and other places, who sat there quietly observing and um, understood their place. Um, there were others who just couldn't hold themselves back, you know, and, and made comments and, and got up, even though that was their right to do so. Um, so yeah, the stifling of that uh, mandated voice um, was quite frankly a, um, an absolute disgrace. And the conclusions that are drawn from those workshops cannot be said that it comes from the mandated people who have the right to speak. And that, I think, is one of the main failings of the, um, of the con convention itself. And so what went on there uh, is not a true reflection in terms of the conclusions, not a true reflection of um, the agreements that people wanted to deal with. Yeah, that's not so.